over the Christian globe. Today's readings will be commented upon in various ways, but we need to bear in mind that the teacher is Christ the Master, and it is our role to listen, not to add or take away, or to think that we have grown up and know more. We are nothing. The disciple is the one who listens. The root of learning is there in the word disciple. Let us ask this grace then as we approach this gospel and also the first reading linked to it. What does it mean? Well, it would seem that the Lord is trying to invite his listeners who think that they know the answer because they're putting him to the test to a higher level, to a deeper meaning, to the origin of all things and therefore the plan of God for the good of his creation. There is also something the Pharisees, who are experts on the law, are not aware of, that they have the very lawgiver before them, the Alpha and the Omega, who has far more authority than Moses. And that this same person, being the Son of God, is, before he ascends into heaven, going to set up the system which will last until the end of time, to transmit the life of God to his creatures, the sacramental system, the church itself. And in that, this sacred bonding between the two highest creatures on earth, man and woman, is going to be elevated to something which is going to be in some way linked with the Blessed Trinity by its very essence. And in that context, we begin to intuit what we're at when we join a man and woman together in holy matrimony sacramentally. It's no longer under our control. It's no longer just two. There's a third element, a third party, greater than all the rest. Therefore, one cannot undo what is being done there. God is in the midst, and his will is to be honoured, not our own despite human weakness, which precisely is aided by this sacrament. So, what of marriage breakdown? It is almost to make fun of the hundreds and hundreds of hidden victims of marriage breakdown over the centuries who have quietly accepted their situation, but have never come back on their vow, and therefore have remained alone even though abandoned. It is mercy to remember them and to remember also that they are blessed in that victimhood well offered and suffered. With regard to what is going on right now on the planet, let us ask the question, what is it favouring? Does it actually help an individual soul to be encouraged to carry on in a situation which actually is not graced. The bottom line is this, the whole realm of sexuality is so sacred that it is under the divine authority in the context in which it is executed and therefore the question is can it ever be executed outside this sacred bond? And the face of it is, that is now questioned, is that it is negotiable. But is it actually the case? Can one ever involve the totality of the person in sexual acts outside this sacred bond? All the tradition of the Church says otherwise. Therefore, any commentary on this has to be placed in that global context. Can we actually change that central bit? It is true that there are situations of helping to bring up children, limiting the damage of a new state which has happened somewhere along the line, but the central question still remains.
can one actually commit this act outside the sacred bond? In the last resort, right now, it comes back to the individual confessor in the secret of confession. Now he has to be respected. And normally, a confessor, knowing has to answer before God, cannot take upon himself something which actually, objectively, is grave sin. He cannot absolve it without taking that grave sin upon his soul and having to answer for it when it becomes to his judgment. So this is the question one has to respect the confessor. And if down the line one finds oneself in a situation where an individual confessor is going to be pressurized to go against his conscience and do violence to it, then there is a total lack of mercy. Mercy applies to everyone involved, including also any abandoned party along the line, a person often forgotten. One cannot encourage, therefore, the mentality which down the line is going actually to lead to a weak situation for a woman. For until our generation it was known, even among non-Catholics, Protestants and whatnot, that if one married a Catholic, one had that security that it was forever from the outset. If one brings in another mentality, one is only going to favour the already fragile nature of man, encouraging the notion of ad experimentum, and then will heal the consequences if it doesn't work out. John Paul II did not easily give laicization to priests. His line was, one had to think about it hard before, before ordination. The mentality of being able easily then to be laicized and to make a new life doesn't help the young man who engages, and so it is with marriage. From the beginning, to give a notion that it is so sacred it is irreversible is actually a far better pastoral policy in the long run than a misunderstood notion of clemency, which only encourages instability. <laughs>